Well, also with the low vibration, that's when the illnesses start to affect because you're, vib you're vibrating so low that your body can't maintain. And when you reach that higher level of cosmic consciousness and bring your vibration up, you're happier, you're more content, you feel, you feel fulfilled and that you can achieve almost anything. And I think it, you're kind of walking around with a sense of, you feel lighter. Yeah. You, you tend to see joy in little things, you know, instead of... You may of, be perceived as an airhead. <laughs> to just, some, to just some degree. Just feeling not, lighter. Not, not present, you know, too. Oh, you know? yeah. Well, well, yeah, not grounded is what you're saying. Yeah, not yeah. grounded, right. Right. And because, yeah, and... Uh, so you learn to manifest um, with the source. So when that occurs, then you know there's really unlimited possibilities for the human race. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future. Very. I hope that future gets here sooner than predicted. So anyway, there are specific traits that uh, Mr. Buck talks about in his book that happened that he feels not only happened to him during his cosmic awakening, but also have happened to some of the people that he was researching in his book. And um, one of the first things that happens, he says, is in his experience was, I mean, it just happened very suddenly. He was, there was like an instantaneous awakening. Um, you know, there, it was unexplainable. There, it was, it like took him by surprise. It just, everything, all at once just seemed to hit him and he said that there was like a, for in his experience there was like he felt like there was a light around him just a, a very illuminating light around him and um, sometimes it takes a um, for some people it takes a life-altering circumstance to initiate this awakening and for other people they found that it just kind of spontaneously happens it you know they could just be sitting by a riverbank one day and all of a sudden this this moment happens to them or they could be the moment just, of enlightenment that uh, aha moment yeah the, the, like the, the veil is lifted <laughs> and uh you know yeah and some and most people can tell you when that moment happened to them when they experienced this you know they can tell you where they were and and what was going on and ex describe their environment and usually explain a little bit about what happened so um you know, when the veil is lifted, it, you also get this sense of intellectual illumination. And uh, you feel like um, the universe becomes alive. And all of a sudden, things that maybe you weren't aware of before, you suddenly seem to have knowledge of or just have a knowing that this is so. or An intuitive knowing or self-knowing that this is the fact. Yeah, it's not that you you're inputting new information. You know, it's you know you don't like activate a chip and all of a sudden you know all there is to know about the world. That'd be sweet. Yeah. <laughs> what, <laughs> yeah, it would actually be kind of like a John Doe put, thing. Put me down for that. <laughs> <laughs> the Matrix, I think that was. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you just have a sense that the universe becomes alive, and you might suddenly see it in a different way, and uh, you know. And you st as you start to realize you're a part of it, you might start. You might learn to pay attention to things in the environment that you may have not noticed before, like a bird chirping, or it could be very simple, just the nature around you, or things like that. So um, well, that gets back to the fact there is never nothing not going on. Uh, yeah, right. Because it's uh, just how perceptive are you to your environment. It's like that moment when you get it, and it kind of reminds me of uh, one of our favorite movies. There's a scene in the Celestine Prophecy, where the the main character is is going through his his um, changes, working towards enlightenment, and he's standing on top of a cliff, and he he's seeing a vision of of evolution throughout history. You know, from well, the Darwin theory on up to today, and it it, it like. In this vision, he, he gets it. He just really understands how it's all connected and how everything in his life has led up to this very moment. And uh, it's, it's, it's that, it's just an awakening experience that it, it, you just suddenly 
it makes sense. Everything just makes sense while you're here. And For our listening audience's information, that was James Redfield? Yeah, he wrote the book, and they made a movie out of it called Celestine Prophecy, and it's a very good movie. It's one of our favorite movies, and we, we kind of watch it when we want to, uh, when we feel like the, the world's kind of going in the opposite direction. We put that movie on just to kind of remind us that, yeah, this stuff really is going on. There, there are these changes happening in the world, and there are people who, who see things differently, and, and uh, you know, the changes are actually happening. So it's, it's, if you haven't seen movies, definitely recommend it. Kind of gives you a source of immortality, too. Right. And that's one of the things that, that uh, Mr. Buck also wrote about was, you know, you learn to connect with your soul. So... There's a lot of people don't do that. Or they find themselves so disconnected from the soul that they have no idea what the soul's purpose is at all. Or that the soul even exists. I yes. Mean, I mean, we were like that when we were locked in our own world thinking of self, and we had no idea that, that we even had a soul. No well, that's where the ego was superseding. Right, definitely. The soul, the ego was in control, and now that we feel that we've been through some type of awakening experience, we feel like we're kind of soul-driven instead of ego-driven. There's still some growth to go there, but <laughs> I think it's all part of the journey, right? <laughs> you know, once the master starts, stops learning from the student, you know, then there's no sense in carrying on. So, if, you know, the, the whole process is you're always learning. No matter how much you think you know, there is always more to be learned. And I think one of the things that happens during this sense of um, immortality is you start to open yourself up to love. I mean, love is something in, well, in our generation, we, it's very loosely defined, you know. Usually it's associated with some type of sexual experience or... And, uh, or 60s, free love. Yeah, free love. Flower power. But really, what is love all about? It, it's about compassion and caring. And For one another. Yeah, not just... Not just. Not know. the physical, but the spiritual and the emotional. Yeah, you develop a sense of spiritual love and, and you start to, to see compassion and show compassion to others. And, uh, so, um, you lose that, death, uh, I mean, that fear of death, too. I mean, it, it, death doesn't mean anything anymore. Uh, death is actually perceived as a continuance of life, of the life process. A lot of traditional beliefs teach us that this is the only life we have, and when this life is over, that's it. So a lot of people walk into the belief, they live with the belief that um, death is something to fear because it's going to mean that, that it's over. But if you feel that you're, you have this, you know, that you're immortal, then there's no reason to fear your death because there'll be rebirth. There'll be a cycle that continues. Well, yeah, and take it a little, bit, a little bit further, just a step further. We're energy. The soul is energy. I mean, this body that we occupy, that the soul occupies, is physical. It's got a shelf life. The soul does not have a shelf life. After 60 to 100 years, this body is gone. So where does that energy go? Does it just die with the body? Some believe that. But looking at it in a more open-minded aspect, it, that energy has to go someplace. And this is more of what we're trying to get across to with the cosmic consciousness that that energy is kind of eternal yes it continues on when the body dies yes yeah so you know you as you lose that that fear of death it, it you it also takes away that that sense of, of lack you, you live with less fear in your life because you're you're not if you don't have lack